Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Today you see I'm in the cockpit. Uh, and we're going to have an interesting discussion that uh, crosses over a couple of different worlds. An engineering world and more an intuitive human world. And that's the integration of human to machine. And uh, it's a very interesting topic. I hope you stick with me and watch the rest of the video. So come on along. Okay, glad to see you're still here. Uh, we're going to talk about integrating humans with machines. Uh, it's a arcane topic, really. Uh, it, it's a whole profession. You can get degrees in it, uh, certifi certify yourself in it, and spend your entire life uh, working just in that field. Uh, it used to be a lot of guesswork. It's becoming more of a science. Uh, there are uh, programs now where you can do a decent simulation of the spectrum of humans that you can expect to interface with your machine and uh, how they fit into the scenario. And that's the key to it. Mostly it's about fitting. How far can they reach? How tall are they? How can they bend? Um, and, and that is a key part of the problem. Uh, another part of the problem that is not so easy to predict or write code for is how human beings behave. Um, uh, human beings do the most unexpected things at the worst possible time. Uh, and we have to try to design vehicles to avoid catastrophic ends when human beings do something unusual. So uh, I'm going to talk today a bit about some of the human factors that cropped up while I was working on the cockpit uh, for my new glider and are, are still <laughs> cropping up and I'm having to work with them on a day-by-day -day basis. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the, the height of the pilot's cage relative to where the pilot's suspended and relative to the harnessing system, how it's all set up. And I'm going to uh, pull my feet back here for a second so I can set them on the ground and uh, talk a little bit more clearly uh, about what's going on here. My wing's a little bit different than anything else that's been out there before. Uh, about the closest vehicle would be the Swift. But the big difference between the Swift and my glider is on the Swift, the pilot is suspended from essentially the side rails uh, of the cockpit. And when the, the pilot's actually well below the side rails, uh, when they launch, the, the rails are way up here under their armpits. And once they're up flying, the pilot's well below the pilot's cage. And they have a, a strap here that runs over a ratchet pulley up front. And the pilot pulls a strap and literally jacks himself up into the cockpit. An interesting and novel solution to the problem because how often do you think about, okay, I'm going to have to insert my pilot into the cockpit after I take off. Uh, that's a pretty unusual scenario. Yet that system works quite well. On the downside, when I've looked at the components of that system, it looks heavy. Okay, now that the leaf blowing is over, uh, we're, we're back to things that are much more fun to talk about, uh, like airplanes, gliders. So uh, here we are uh, in my cockpit, and I was discussing the pilot suspension system and how, unlike the Swift, uh, I am suspended from the wing itself. You can see that I am free to move fore and aft, and if I want a little bit side to side like this. Now, the side to side is not going to gain me much in terms of any roll control. Uh, but in terms of pitch, I can have quite an impact on the situation. I can move the CG significantly. And in fact, for flying wings, moving the CG forward uh, is a big plus uh, when you want to go fast. Rather than putting the stick down, elevons down to go fast, uh, that causes a lot of drag uh, at high speed. Much better if we just keep the elevons kind of in neutral and we bring the weight forward and we pick up speed that way. Uh, in addition, if you go see my uh, other videos, I'll put a link in the description about uh, uh, pecking and pitch damping. And I can provide pitch damping with my body 
uh, got my arm over here, and I can damp out the system because my weight is significant compared to the weight of the aircraft. Uh, so that's another plus. Uh, but there are some drawbacks. Uh, the Swift uh, has a pretty easy system to deal with. You get strapped in, you're hooked to the pilot's cage here, and when you lift up, when you lift the glider up, the strapping system for lifting goes to the same place as where the pilot is hooked in, to these side rails. Um, by doing that, they have two advantages. Uh, they have the advantage of you can make the hook in points common and simplify the system. And you don't have this issue with getting the right proportions between the suspension system here for the pilot and how long are the lift straps and how big is the pilot's cage. That, that almost becomes a moot point. With this system, averaging those out or figuring them out so that they both work is very difficult. It's a matter of just a few inches here and there. Uh, one way you end up with a really big pilot's cage, larger than this one, and uh, the other way you end up with a really short pilot's cage and you end up having to crouch over like this to launch it because you're up against the wing. Now as I mentioned, the Swift has the system where they jack the pilot up into the wing. And uh, I will put a link to a video that has a review of the Swift cockpit. And you see those components, you're going to see, they look pretty heavy. Yeah, they're aluminum, they're fabric and so forth. But that's got to be adding at least a pound and a half to the weight of the aircraft. And that's a pound and a half we don't want. Plus, uh, it violates my rule, my basic rule of aircraft parts. The very best part is one that doesn't exist. Uh, because A, don't weigh anything, and B, it can never fail because it's not there. The more parts you add, the more complexity you add, it's the higher weight and higher probability of failure somewhere along the line. So if we can simplify, 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 and get rid of parts, so much the better, especially if they're moving parts. Okay, so jacking the pilot into the cockpit is an answer. It's been proven to work, work well but it does violate some of the other KISS principles of keep it simple, stupid. Uh, and let me tell you, the hardest thing in engineering that I've ever encountered is keeping things simple. Because engineers are really smart. Uh, we have a lot of design tools at hand. And we can solve any problem. And we tend to towards, well, i got to add this and this and this. And if I do this and this and this, and it solves the problem. And the next thing you know, you have a pretty complex solution on your hands. And then to whittle that back to the essence of what you need to do the job is difficult. Um, so engineers are hard pressed to sit there and go, I need to design something that's simple. I need fewer parts. I need uh, simpler motions. I need no motions at all. And as you begin to restrict yourself on, I can't have this and I can't have that, the design solution becomes much more difficult. And I spend hours upon hours scratching my head going, how do I get rid of those parts? How do I do it simpler? And I try to do that work ahead of time before I build the aircraft. Uh, sometimes I do it with mock-up uh, work uh, to avoid building it into the aircraft and trying to figure out how to take it out later because it's very difficult to remove weight after the fact. See that when I stand up here, in order to lift the aircraft up like this, I have to hunch over a little. Now that hunching over is a compromise. I have to duck my head a little bit to launch. And that was a compromise so that the pilot's cage didn't have to be any bigger. So you've got to walk, run with this thing a little hunched over. Uh, and the other thing is, I didn't want wheels that were gigantic and heavy. These are relatively small wheels. I've got a 20-incher in back. I think I've got a 16-incher up front. And with my feet up, I want to be in a situation where my butt's not going to hit the ground if I have to land on the wheels. Wheels are not really meant for landing on, but it might be a case where you just can't get your feet down, uh, you're just not ready, and you just got to set it down on the wheels. Or maybe it's been a really long flight and your legs are asleep, and you got to come in on the wheels. So these straps can't be too long. My butt cannot hang out the bottom of the cage too far. In addition, I don't want a bunch of my body sticking out the bottom creating drag. Then I got to go build me some kind of complex, heavy uh, cockpit fairing down here, close it in, some clamshell thing. Right now, my only intention is to have a small closure up front by my feet 
across the bottom. Feet go up inside like this on top of that enclosure. So my, my idea is to leave all of this open and then eventually there'll be a fairing behind me and uh, there'll be a piece that comes forward up to about my butt. And the general flying position is more like this. I'll have a set of straps that come from the harness here, not the lift harness, but my other harness. Here we go. Set of straps that come from here and go up to the shackles where I'm hooked into the glider. And that'll uh, give me a nice resting position and I'll be supported. Uh, let's see, grab it here. I'll be supported like this. I'll be held up like this and be very comfortable. Might put a headrest on here eventually. And I have a clear view straight up overhead, except for the tail boom. But I have a clear view of who might be flying in the thermal above me. I have a clear view straight ahead, all the sides, all the way around. Good view. The only view I don't have is up this way. But if I push back and look, I can see that area generally. So uh, it's always a compromise on the uh, uh, viewing angles. And you do the best compromise you can get. Uh, there are worse situations. Now, with the Swift, what they have uh, is uh, their wing is designed differently. There's less taper in it. When you have less taper, your aerodynamic center ends up further outboard on each panel. And that means you can place the pilot further aft. And that, their pilot is actually placed pretty much at the trailing edge here. And they don't use a tail boom. And they have a trailing edge that you can open up. And if you go look at the video, there's a canopy there that opens up. It's zippered in the middle. And when the pilot stands up, his head actually sticks up above the wing. The pilot's cage is much shorter. So when he runs the launch, his, his head is up where the wing would be. And then after he's up, he can zipper close uh, the canopy. Uh, another situation there is they've got more moving parts. You've got a zipper. You've got a pull cord. You've got pulleys. Uh, it's more complexity. Uh, but it helps solve some of their how do you pick it up and run with it uh, issue. Um, so the whole situation is a bunch of factors moving at once that you have to adjust each one a little bit here and there until you have something that works. It's very difficult to predict ahead of time. Uh, some people might wonder, why don't you just get a CAD system, put a human figure in it, put your controls in it, and figure it all out on the board, and then just go build it. Sorry if, uh, you're picking, if we're picking up the uh, leaf blower noise across the street. I'd like to get the video done, so we're just going to move ahead, and I'll speak louder over uh, the leaf blower, because apparently it's leaf blowing day across the street. <laughs> Even though it's a really windy day here today, and any leaves they blow are just going to blow back. But uh, that's neither here nor there. So, uh, let's see, back to where I was. Where the heck was I? Um, oh, uh, mock-ups and CAD models. Uh, my buddy Bob always gives me a hard time about CAD models and, and not working all this stuff out ahead of time. And I'd rather just build a mock-up or in, in the about amount of time that the days and days and days I would spend drawing it up in SolidWorks, I could actually build the cockpit and put in parts and see what works. And if they don't work, I kind of lose and I move them somewhere else. And as a matter of fact, that's what I've actually done with this cockpit. Uh, the, I built a very simple mock-up, did a little bit of work with it, Really didn't know how I was going to solve all the control placement and control functions. Uh, and I spent quite a bit of time thinking about it. I didn't have a good solution. Uh, and I figured, well, something will come to me. I'll figure it out before I finish the glider. And that's essentially what I've done. Uh, for example, I'll give you a quick example. I thought for sure it was going to be a push rod system from the gearbox up to the wing and hook into the drive system up there such that when you plug the wings in, the controls have already be hooked up. Let me tell you, that design, no matter how you did it, was really heavy, complex, with a lot of moving parts. I did not like that at all. Just too much room for failure, too much complexity. The Swift has push rods. Their push rods can stay in place because of how their cockpit is set up. It stays together. This is a parallelogram. This whole thing folds flat up to the wing. So that means the push rods would have to come out. So I gotta have some way to reach up inside the wing and pin it to the control horns there. I gotta hook it up down here, a nightmare. Uh, so I ended up with, gee, there's not much that's lighter than cables. Cables are really incredibly light for what they do. So I have a system here, you can't see it up here, but there's a couple of holes up here where we shove the cables in. They come out here, the bottom of the wing, and down here they go. So when we put the wing on, we stuff the cables in, down they go, 
little clevis pin, four connections, controls are hooked up. And there are no um, uh, torque tubes to fail, there's no bearings to fail uh, or bind, and uh, there's a whole bunch of fewer parts that need to be put together. And it's somewhat similar to what I had on my first wing, slightly different setup, uh, but similar enough that I know it works, and it's lightweight, it's simple, and it uh, reduces the probability of failure of any given component. Uh, so, better to go with a known answer that uh, I know is a good solution before, rather than create something new that's more complex. Uh, just for the benefit of being able to stick the wings on without having to hook up any other uh, connections for the